welcome back from Heather Mac Reacts. Today we're going through some more Am I the A-hole videos. And if you like content like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five days a week, every single week. Now, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this first story. Okay, once again, Reddit is saying not the A-hole. This says, am I the A-hole for not allowing my neighbor to park in my driveway? Okay, there is such a thing as being neighborly, but that could go too far. So let's see. Me, 37 female, my neighbors have five cars and a two-car drop a two-car driveway. There looks to be three generations living in the home. There is at least five drives cars. <laughs> And they are constantly shuffling cars around between the garage, the driveway, and a car parked in the grass. Our town tickets cars parked on the street overnight, and it's a suburban area, so no public parking or a lot anywhere. Yesterday, someone called the police on the car in the grass, saying it looked abandoned. The family is here all legally, but the father came over and explained it really freaked everyone out, and the police were checking green cards and such. I can easily put six cars in my driveway as well, as I have a two-car garage. It's only my children and myself here and I'm the only driver. We have one car. My neighbor is asking him to put a car in my driveway now. That way no one will bother him about the car in the grass and it will make their lives easier. I said no because of liability. I really do not know my neighbors and my kids play in my front yard constantly. I have dings on my car from scooters and bikes as well as sometimes we do crafts in the driveway. I honestly just don't want to bother with another car and asking them to move or if I have company them suddenly not having a place to park their car. My neighbor told me I was a huge a-hole because I have all this space and his kids have to live in constant fear of the police showing up again and checking their green cards and or visas. Am I the a-hole here? I feel terrible. Uh, no, your driveway, your choice, your decision. See, I thought they were, you know, before we read the whole story, I'm thinking of my neighbors. I have neighbors across the street that I'm very close to. We get along great. And if they were like, hey, can I park in your driveway for the weekend so I don't get in trouble? I'd be like, yeah, sure. Park in my driveway for the week weekend. We'll figure it out. But if they wanted to park full time forever, even them who I know, I would have to say, no, I don't think so. I'm not having your car in my driveway for the end of time. I, I, I don't think so. All right, edited to add, I sat on this all day. I called a lawyer and put down deposit for them to come up with a contract that stipulates one car, zero liability, even though even knowing my child may damage the car and I could cancel at any time. When I got out of my car, the neighbor yelled, dumb, See you next Tuesday at me. So I canceled the document altogether and didn't mention it to the neighbor. I think you deserved that. The neighbor, of course. All right, we have some comments. Let's see. First one says, not the a-hole. They need to figure out the car situation on their own. It's their problem that they have so many people living in that one house. It's not anyone else's problem and it's not anyone else's problem they have five cars. Uh, next, not the a-hole, their cars, their problem. You owe them nothing, especially after he treated you this way. Very true. You are not obligated to these people and they have no reason to call you names because you don't want to do something for them. Hello, a favor is supposed to be like of your own volition, not being pressed to do that because it's no longer a favor than it's a demand. All right, last comment. As my neighbor would say, you are not the Salvation Army. Your car-free driveway is important to you. Your kids use it and you use it. It is not your problem. Your neighbors need five cars. They can easily put a not abandoned, please contact blank if there is a question note in that car, if it is parked in the grass again, or make the spot look more like an official parking spot. For example, put a pole behind it with a private sign nailed on. What you write about people calling the police about the car, the police checking their passports, the children panicking, and your neighbor reacting like he did makes me wonder if there is something racist going on in your neighborhood. If so, maybe it's time to initiate a street party or something to make people get to know each other better. Agreed. We could all be more neighborly. But I don't think you're the a-hole. None of those comments thought you were the a-hole. I want to know what you all think in the comments. Maybe you have a different point of view. Let's hear it. And in the meantime, let's get on to the next story. Okay, this says, am I the a-hole for telling my mom that I don't want to see my younger siblings? That sounds pretty harsh, 
But once again, Reddit says they're not the a-hole, so let's see if we agree. So I, 28 female, was pretty much raised by my mom. She was a teen mom and had broken up with my dad. He was in the army station somewhere in Europe. It was just us and we were really close. I love my dad, but we're not that close. When I went to university, I f at first I'd come home at every weekend and whenever I could. But about a year in, my mom had a surprise. My dad moved back to the city and they'd started dating again. Uh oh. And at first I was happy. What 18 year old doesn't want that? And they've been together for so long now and I'm happy they found their way back to each other. But things are different. They got married and then they had two other kids. And after they had them, I guess I started seeing just how much I didn't have and I hate it. I hate it so much. I don't care that it's not their fault or that they're little kids who don't know better. If my dad had come home sooner, I could have had that and I'm smart enough to know that it's better to stay away than feel like that. And beyond that, they honestly seem like brats to me. But you don't know them? So it's been about four years now since I visited for more than a day trip. Since I'm getting married in December, my mom wants all four of us to go on one actual family vacation. The kids want to go to Disney World and she wants me to come along. I just told her there's no way I'm going anywhere unless it's just me and her, maybe dad. I admitted I'm not going to come just to see those kids that the childhood I should have had. I could tell that made her cry, but she hid it from me and my dad texted me later that she's crying and he doesn't know why and asked me to call to help out. I hate that I made her cry, but what should I do? Keep hiding how I feel and go on vacation where I'll be miserable? Edit. To everyone parroting therapy like a broken record, I get it and I go to it. I swear it's like people on the sub think you should get therapy if you cut yourself clipping your toenails. Okay, we have a comment, but I'm gonna give my opinion first because I can relate to this very well. My mother had me and my brother when she was in her late 20s and then divorced from my dad, had a few years of being single, and then met my stepdad. My mom had my little sister and my little brother after that. They are 13 and 14 years younger than me, so it is a completely new generation of kids. Now, these kids had a mom, they had a dad, they didn't have a mom working nights at the bar and being babysat by aunts, they didn't have a mom who couldn't wake up in the morning with them for school because she was too tired from working all night, they didn't have, you know, a boyfriend here, uh, then a stepdad they didn't have to deal with that they always had their dad in the picture okay they had rooms of their own me and my other brother never had rooms of our own they got brand new rooms with brand new carpets and drapes and pretty color paints whereas me and my brother were still downstairs with hand-me-down doors and I had two closets and he had zero closets. So there was clearly a very big divide between how me and my brother grew up versus how these two new ones grew up. But why would I blame them for that? Why would I, why would I hate them? Because they have what I could have had. No, I'm happy that they didn't have to grow up the way I did. I'm happy that they could have, that they could lean on our mother more and not have to be so independent so early. I don't begrudge them that. I don't begrudge my mother for the mistakes she made when I was younger. She was young, she was a single mother, and she did the best she could. This person is like entitled to a good childhood. I'm sorry, sister, most of us don't have good childhoods. Suck it up buttercup that's my opinion let's see what the comment says they say not the a-hole i disagree genetic proximity does not create an obligation for a child to be involved with their parents decision in perpetuity you don't owe your parents or siblings anything no you don't but you could stop being a bratty little you think they're brats i think you're a brat and if you don't even know them then how can you call them brats and it's funny because like my siblings are step sibling. Oh, no, I'm sorry. They're not step siblings. My siblings are half siblings. These are your full 100% blood siblings. And this is how you talk about them. Disgusting. <sighs> Parents provide because we love our children and have a legal and ethical obligation to help them grow up. You don't know, you don't owe anything in return. Yes, you do. Your parents raised you. You owe them the respect for having sacrificed for you for so many years you don't have strong relationships with your siblings and they represent to you a childhood that you wish you could have had you don't have to put yourself into situations where you have to face that 
Um, disagree. Why don't you put yourself in that situation and instead of being angry and bitter that you didn't get to grow up like that, how about you be grateful that there are two kids who have a better life than you? Like this is a, this sounds like a woman who would have a child and then be jealous of her when the father spends time with her and says spends child with the daughter instead of the mother. That's what this is ringing to me. Like don't be jealous of little kids who can't it help that they have a good childhood and like grow the you know what just gotta bring them in i didn't think i was gonna get fired up on a not the a-hole post but i think she is 100 percent being the a-hole and needs to grow the hell up that's my opinion i'd like to know what you think because maybe you have a differing opinion. Maybe you agree with Reddit, but I think she's being an a-hole. Let's get on to the next story before I lose my freaking mind because I'm so irritated right now. <sighs> okay, next story. <sighs> Calm down, Heather. Am I the a-hole for encouraging my daughter to bang on the dinner table? When I first saw that, I thought they meant sexual intercourse, but now I'm thinking they mean like bang, 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 bang. Uh, okay, Reddit also says they're not the a-hole, but obviously we don't always agree, so let's see what we think. Last week, my wife and daughter, Lizzie, three female, and I had dinner with my family. We were there to celebrate my brother's engagement. My parents were hosting the dinner at a restaurant, and it was the first time wife and I met brother's fiance, Anna, as we don't live near my family. Wife is deaf and wears hearing aids. My family are aware that she's deaf. My parents have learned a few signs so they can interact with her. As she is deaf, we have been teaching Lizzie sign language. When we are in loud environments, wife is often overwhelmed by all the noise and turns off her hearing aids. When this happens, we tell Lizzie in advance and she knows that if she needs her mom's attention to either stamp her feet or bang on the table so that wife can feel the vibrations and know that Lizzie wants her. Understandable. When we got to the restaurant, it was so... It was loud, so wife told me she was turning off her hearing aids and would just lip read. Brother and Anna hadn't arrived yet, but my parents were there and they apologized for the restaurant being louder than they expected. My parents understand why she turns off her hearing aids and had tried to pick somewhere quiet. When brother and Anna arrived, I told them that wife had turned off her hearing aids. Brother just rolled his eyes while Anna had a slight look of disgust. Like this? Is this the face? Because I'm disgusted at you. Anna was sat next to wife at the table. Lizzie was on the op opposite side of wife. Partway through dinner, Lizzie banged the table next to wife, wanting her attention. But as wife was conversing with Anna, she didn't respond to Lizzie right away. So Lizzie banged on the table a second time and she got wife's attention to be taken to the toilet. While they were gone, Anna snapped at me, telling me that we need to teach Lizzie not to be rude. I tried explaining that this is how Lizzie gets her mom's attention when she had turned off her hearing aids and we encourage it. But Anna continued that this was rude and we should parent better. Sorry, Anna, do you have children? I love when non-parents think they know everything. Anna referred to wife as being defective. Mamma disability isn't a defectiveness. So I made the decision for us to leave. Absolutely. See you later. I apologized to my parents, offered to pay for our meal, and picked up our belongings. My parents insisted that Anna apologized, but brother agreed that the table banging had been rude. I think they're both rude. F off with brother and sister-in-law. That evening, I got an angry phone call from my brother with Anna shouting in the background, furious that I had made a scene at the restaurant and left when it was Lizzie banging on the table that had been rude. He also wants me to pay him back for dinner as my parents made him pay for the dinner because Anna had been rude and they didn't want to give her the idea that they supported her behavior. They just left, they left just after we did. I'm pretty sure that I'm not the a-hole as this is normal to me with wife being deaf, but it might look rude to people on the outside. Edit, Lizzie was sat on the end of the table, wife was to her left and I was to her right. Yes, she could have asked me to take her to the toilet it, but Lizzie doesn't like going into the men's and prefers to go with her mom. And I can attest that my son will run right past my husband and to me to ask for something. And I'm like, go ask your father. He's right there and he's doing nothing. That's just how kids are. I swear. Uh, okay. We have a comment. Do you want to give our opinions first? Sure. Absolutely not the a-hole. Anna and this brother can F off. Okay. Sit on it and spin. I would absolutely not deal with any of that. I'm so glad that the parents were not supporting that rude ass behavior by those grown ass people. But let's see what the comment has to say. Holy cow, Anna is wow. 
That's one word for her. Not the a-hole. While I generally would not would say not to teach your kids to bang on the table, she's doing it for a specific purpose that's acceptable in the deaf community for attention getting. However, this tactic is usually used amongst deaf individuals with deaf individuals. You need to be teaching your child to get her attention in a variety of circumstances. There were multiple avenues of getting your wife's attention in this scenario that aren't as intrusive in a public setting and your daughter needs to be taught them as well. She's three, so you have some time. Just don't make table banging her go-to when there's other non-intrusive ways of getting a deaf person's attention. The first time she banged, you should have gotten your wife's attention, in, attention instead of letting her keep on banging, not the a-hole. Uh, I sort of agree. Yes, after the first bang and the mom didn't pay attention, the dad definitely should have stepped in and said, hey, mom's in the middle of a conversation. What do you need? What can I help you with? Or maybe I can get mom's attention for you. Okay. But if it's a loud freaking restaurant, who cares about the banging? I'm sure no one's noticing. Like uh, y'all are making too big of a deal about a little bang, bang, bang on the table. Like it, it's really, it's really not that big of a deal. Okay, I wanna know what you think about that one in the comments. Please don't forget we have a playlist of over 100 Am I the A-hole videos up here that you can binge. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!